finally watched another movie. It only took a week. Um, I'm trying to average two movies a week for the rest of the year because, I, you know, I used to do like one a day and um, I'm finding that I just don't have the energy to do that pace anymore. Um, but at the same time, like, I also miss movies, so... Uh, I'm trying to I'm trying to aim for two a week, so this is one of my two for at least for this week. Um, this being uh, one of the Denzel Washington films I have left. So I, I don't know if you guys remember because it was in like January. I decided I was going to try to finish off Denzel's filmography. Um, so I think I've seen 24 of his films now, and I have 18 left to see. So we'll see how far I get. Although. <sighs> Magnificent Seven is coming out, I think also in September. I'm really excited for that. Um, I haven't said what I watched yet. I watched The Equalizer. I remember when it came out. It came out in 2014, and I was still working at Rotten Tomatoes. And it got, like, really mixed reviews. And I loved Denzel, but I was sort of just not feeling it. I don't know. I don't I guess I didn't like the premise or something. So I didn't see it in theaters. Um even though the poster is, like, really cool. So I finally decided to watch it, and it's on, um, I switched pages. I, like, tabs open, and this is much brighter. Um, it's on Stars, so I watched it on Stars. And also, they have, like, six or seven Denzel films on Stars, and most of them I've seen, but this was one of the ones that I hadn't seen. The other one being Deja Vu, which I will watch soon. This one is directed by Antoine Fuqua, and he's the guy who directed Training Day, uh, obviously for which Denzel won his second Oscar, um, his for his only lead Oscar. Uh, strangely, not for Malcolm X. I don't even understand. They had not, I believe, made a film together since, so it was like 13 years that they hadn't worked together, because he made all those movies with Tony Scott, most of which I haven't seen, although he's really good in the taking of Pelham 123. So, uh, this review is all over the place. I'm sorry. Where was I going with this? There, but they, um, he's, Anton Fuqua did uh, Magnificent Seven, so that'll be another one. And there's supposed to be a se sequelizer. <laughs> oh my god, can they please call it the sequelizer? No. The <laughs> equalizer is supposed to have a sequel um, coming out in 2017. <laughs> the main high concept of the film is that Denzel Washington is a dude, and he seems like a quiet, normal dude. He washes his dishes, lives alone, reads great literature, works at the Home Depot. It's a Home Depot knockoff place. Mentors people, helps people do better. Um, people keep guessing what he did, you know, in his previous job because he's like 60 working at Home Depot, so he clearly had some other life prior to this. Um, and he can't sleep, and he frequents this 24-hour diner that's also frequented by an escort lady played by Grace Chloe Moritz. Chloe Grace Moritz, I always do that. Um, Chloe Grace Moritz, um, who also turns out to be a tr um, Russian girl who was sex trafficked to the America and is run by the Russian mob. So she gets beat up and he decides to get justice. He also gets justice for a few other things that are quasi-related. Um, and it's distinctly in three acts. So as this goes on, you find out the reason he has all these great skills uh, at killing people is that he once worked for the CIA. So you have the first act where it's really setting up the relationship between um, Moritz and Washington and it's a really great character piece and it's very studied and they're both two really great actors working off of each other and um, it almost feels like it could be the opening of like a Godard film or something because these characters are so they're just talking and they're just people you know um, in very earthy jobs but then, you know, the, then the, then she gets, then the inciting incident, you know, in the second act is her 
getting beat by um, the evil Russian mobsters. And then you get this other character played by Martin, I don't know how to say his last name, Koskas, C-S-O-K-A-S. And he's like the most evil Russian mobster you'll ever see on a in a movie. He's so evil. He's so evil. It's great. Great. So then you get the, the, the second act, which is like him trying to find Denzel and Denzel trying to figure out who he is. And it's like cat and mouse. And they're all trying to find each other. And then the third act is when all hell breaks loose and like there's a million action set pieces and like shit blowing up, like literally blowing up and like crazy stuff and there's actually some great a a action pieces in the second part too where he like takes out five people and in, in what he thinks is going to be 16 seconds but it actually takes him 25 seconds and it's so beautifully filmed um so this is this is a very very violent film this is not a film that you will enjoy if you do not like uh stylized hyper violence because this is it's just st mostly stylized hyper violence and with a lot of um, talking thrown in the middle. Um, so it's like two kinds of films meshed into one. And it, for me, it all worked. Like the, the tense talking parts were tense and interesting and the action set pieces were fun to watch. And I, I guess I'm probably less um, like tired of this kind of film. I read a bunch of, a few reviews that basically like, ugh, not another film like this, because I haven't seen like any of the Liam Neeson action films. I'm, I don't, I don't go see these kind of movies that often, so I'm, it doesn't seem like one of many to me, so that helped my enjoyment of it. And then Denzel is the most charming, talented actor the screen ha has working right now, and he's just so great that whether he's like making his little his tea out of the tea bag that he brings himself or he's you know killing somebody with a corkscrew he does it with <laughs> such eloquence and such command of the screen that you're just enthralled um he's just such a great actor god so oh and then there's bonus bill pullman out of nowhere I, you know I, I didn't look at the cast list before i watched it so i didn't Oh my god, I'm yawning. I didn't know he was um, going to come until his name showed up in the credits, and I was like, wait a minute, Bill Pullman's in this movie. Bill Pullman's another that person that I, I truly love. I truly love Bill Pullman. So, there are some issues in that you only really see a handful of women in the film, and one of them is the mother of the kid that he mentors, but she's a business owner and I, I think that's important like she runs her own restaurant um you have some cashiers uh and you have obviously a, um chloe who is a prostitute and one other prostitute that you meet um but they're they're sort of nuanced and less less um sort of victims than they could have been. They, they definitely had a weight to their characters that I, I think is not in a lot of le lesser films. Um, and then you have um, Melissa Leo playing a, another ex-CIA agent. So part of me wishes there were more women, but in the world in which it's set, there wouldn't really be. But what I did find quite interesting was that there's... Um, little tidbits of commentary on the sort of work immigrants um, do in this country in like in in that they get fucked over basically like you have the this she's clearly the immigrant and her son is a first gen and she's trying to run this honest you know restaurant and then she's getting shut down by cops um, so she can't get ahead because she's getting the shaft because she's an immigrant. And then you have, at one point, they break into these Russian mobsters, like, hidden money laundering place. And it's a bunch of, of uh, Chinese women who are working in this cramped, tight factory because they came to America probably for a better uh, life. And now they're stuck working under the table with this the Russian mob. So I found that really kind of 
kind of fascinating because it was there, but it, it wasn't, he wasn't like, this is what I'm saying, but it was also, this is what he's saying. And I found, I, I really enjoyed that aspect of it. And lastly, I want to praise Denzel Washington's dad jeans. He does all this equalizing, all this, all this merciless, slick killing in dad jeans. Kind of like, like an old man in dad jeans, you know? Don't underestimate. Don't underestimate the dad jeans. So this was The Equalizer. It was directed by Antoine Fuqua. The guy who wrote it uh, is the guy who wrote The Expendables 2, which I really enjoyed, but I still haven't seen The Expendables 3. I don't know what happened. That came out the same year. I didn't see a lot of things that fall. I can't remember why. I don't know. Um... I enjoyed this. Again, it's on Stars. You can probably rent it. It's all over the place. Came out in 2014. Denzel Washington and Antoine Fuqua's The Equalizer.